and welcome to my farmhouse kitchen. I'm Marnay and you are just in time for dinner. So come on in, have a seat at my counter, grab a cup of coffee and watch me make you dinner. So tonight's dinner is gonna be chicken and dumplings and you're not gonna wanna miss this meal because this meal is the total comfort food. It is a cold eight degrees out here in New York. <laughs> And tonight is comfort food night. And if you want to stick around, I am going to do a double video tonight because I'm also going to be doing some homemade biscuits so I can um, make some sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits for breakfast in the morning. So we'll get to that later. But starting now, I want to get my dinner started. So I need to get um, some chicken broth on the, on the boil on my stove. And I need six cups of chicken broth. But this container here only contains 32 ounces, so I need two more cups. So I just got two cups of water and two bouillon cubes, two um, chicken bouillon cubes to make up the difference for my broth. So I'm gonna get that on the stove and light up my stove and that will be the first step. So if you want to know the recipe to this, um, this meal, grab a pen and paper because I am old school and I don't, <laughs> I'm not techie, I don't do the PDF file alone, I don't know. But I'm gonna walk you through it. So uh, have a seat and we'll get started. So I'm an old fashioned kind of girl with an old fashioned kind of stove. So this is how we do it in the bee farmhouse. So and I'm going to put in my chicken broth. Slow going coming out of this container, but believe me, this will all be worth it when you taste this. This is the ultimate comfort food. I've been making this for years. And I've not ever had anybody at my table that was disappointed with this meal. So be prepared. My two cups of water in and my two bouillon cubes. And I'm just gonna get this heated up to a boil. Now, I've already been on um, a roll today. Um, I got my chicken already cooked. And what I did, I took three uh, giant chicken breasts, boneless chicken breasts, and I put them in my crock pot and I cooked them for, I don't know, four or five hours on high and they cook up and then you just shred it. And when I put my chicken in there, I just sprayed my crock pot through my chicken breast in there, thawed. And then I added some salt and pepper, some garlic powder, um, some thyme, and a little bit of a uh, chicken seasoning. It's, it's like a Mrs. Dash, I think. Um, yeah, Dash chicken flavor. Sprinkle of this in your chicken. It just flavors up the meat really well. So really simple. This is a very simple meal. I also got um, some baby carrots and I, when my broth gets boiling, I'm going to throw these carrots into my broth and I'm gonna cook them in my broth because I like my chicken and dumplings with carrots. They just seem to go together, but you could probably put any vegetable in there or if you don't like vegetables, you don't have to put one in there. It's that simple. So, but um, I like the baby carrots because they are fabulous. So I'm gonna get on to the dumplings. And this is a very basic recipe. And it calls for uh, three cups of self-rising flour. Three cups and make sure it's self-rising because this is what's gonna make your dumplings nice and fluffy and fat when you drop them into the, into the broth when it gets rolling to a boil. And then you're going to need a half a cup of shortening, uh, three quarter cups of buttermilk. I'm going to make sure I'm reading my recipe right here. Three, yeah, three quarter cutter, that yeah, three quarter cup, if I could talk right, three quarter cup of buttermilk, two tablespoons of butter or margarine, and then ground black pepper to taste. But I'm going to walk you through, so just pay attention and watch me. Um, like I said, um, I don't have a, you know, a digital recipe. If you want to write down this recipe and make it, you won't regret it. Um, grab a pen and paper and we will get started. So I'm going to get my three cups of self-rising flour and I'm gonna move you down so you can kind of watch what I'm doing. I have a board here on my counter, my bowl all set up. So I got me a little bowl 
and I'm going to make about three cups of soft rising flour. use this flour that much so I do have left I'll probably just store it in my freezer because it helps the flour stay fresher longer. Let's take that out of the way. And now next I'm going to need my half a cup of shortening. So I like Crisco and I'm not a measurer of this stuff. I just eyeball so you do it your way I'll do it mine. I, like I said, I've made this for a long time. What did I say I needed? I needed a half a cup. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball out a half a cup. I got a scoop, which is about, that might be almost a half a cup there that I just put in. I figure a scoop each is almost a quarter cup. So like I said, um, I pretty much eyeball it. A little bit more just for good measure. Okay, so I got my Crisco in there, and now I'm going to need a pastry blender because I'm going to blend this all up with my flour. So let me grab one of those. Pastry blender. Okay, here we go. So you need one of these. This just helps with um, the flour to get it mixed. So I'm just going to kind of work the Crisco into the self-rising flour. And then after I get this all mixed up, I'm going to add my three quarter cups of buttermilk. And I got a measuring cup handy. I don't have to grab my buttermilk out of the fridge. And I'll also need a little um, biscuit cutter for this because I like to cut mine up in little rounds. But you could just roll this out flat and you could take a knife and cut it into squares if you don't have a biscuit cutter. It's however you want to do it. This is about as a homey meal as it comes, you know, and it's simple and it's nothing fancy. So I got that pretty well blended in with my flour. So you can kind of see it looks like coarse crumbs in there. So I'm just going to grab my buttermilk real quick. I've got a measuring cup and we're going to need three quarter cups of buttermilk to mix this in. So I'm also gonna grab a wooden spoon. I don't know which one do I want. I'll do this one. So I'm gonna need a spoon to mix that. And get some buttermilk. Simple good old buttermilk. This stuff makes fabulous biscuits. I've already used some of this last night. I made a chocolate cake. It was a homemade chocolate cake and I'm going to put a whipped cream cheese frosting on it. Um, that's another thing I, I won't have time to get to tonight to make the frosting, but um, if you're interested, you could let me know and I can um, get you a recipe. All right, I'm looking for a three quarter cup. There we go. Um, and a half, three quarter. The whipped cream cheese frosting, it just consists of cream cheese, whipping cream, um, sugar, a little vanilla, and you whip it up and I put it over a homemade chocolate cake. The chocolate cake, uh, I'm pretty sure I have that on another video. It was called the chocolate trifle cake because that was a homemade chocolate cake. So that probably has the recipe on it there if you're interested in that chocolate cake because it is homemade and it is fabulous. And it also has buttermilk in it and of course coffee. So. Okay, we're gonna mix this up and um, I am going to roll it out and I'm gonna cut it up into um, little dumplings and show you how that works out. So this buttermilk will just make a nice, a nice dough. And I've already got my board here to roll out my, my dumplings on. Like I said, this is pretty quick and easy. Your crock pot does the work for you to cook your chicken so you can shred it. And once you get your dumplings into your broth and you cook them, um, I then add my cooked chicken. So my carrots will already be in there too because they'll be boiling. And um, once the dumplings are cooked and you drop the chicken in there, 
she's delicious. Well, you'll drop some, um, you'll drop two tablespoons of butter in the broth too after it's all cooked and of course some, some black pepper. Now this, my dough is a little sticky, so I'm probably gonna need a little more flour because I don't want this sticking to my hand. I want it to be nice and um, not sticky so I can roll it out and I can handle it with my hand. So I'm just gonna keep a little extra flour on the side and just kind of keep working this a little bit. She's looking better. So now I want to get some flour out on my board because I really want to um, have this. I'm going to roll it right out. So my spatula. Get my dough off my spoon. Turn this out and try to make it as not sticky as possible. It still is pretty sticky. Use the rest of that flour and work it in. This is all self-rising flour, so it just works right into the dough. this up a little bit and it's still a little bit sticky but if I work that flour in it'll make it less sticky and it'll roll out nice and I want to get that broth boiling and this is working out really nice it feels really good it's nice and soft this out a little bit and you want to roll it out to about so it's about a quarter inch thick because they are going to puff up and this is going to make a lot of dumplings and I know it's just Jim and I but um I don't, it says it yields four servings I always say that this this meal is always better the next day and there's always leftovers. So we always enjoy it the next day when we heat it up because it seems like it's thicker after it's set overnight in the refrigerator. And I don't know, it just tastes really good. So we were supposed to have company tonight to share this meal with us, but we couldn't make it. But we decided we were gonna go ahead and make it anyway. <laughs> We'd already had the chicken in the crock pot and it's a cold eight degrees outside and this is just the perfect meal for tonight. So I think I've got this rolled out pretty good. I am going to wash my hand and find me a little um, biscuit cutter. So I'm gonna try not to get flour all over. Let me wash up, I'm a little doughy, and I will get a cookie cutter and we'll cut some dumplings. So. everything ready but I have a cookie cutter handy so I'm just going to step over and get a cookie cutter real quick. Mm. I'm going to check on my broth. It's heating up but I think I need to get the flame up a little bit higher because I want to get this good and rolling to a, a good boil because I do want to drop my 
my carrots in there. So give me one second while I grab the cutter. I have a little tiny round one, and I have a set of these. And this is a this is a one and a half inch little cutter, and it has a circle on one side where it has the rigid on the other. But I'm going to use the circle side because these don't have to be anything fancy. So we're just going to cut these up. And I probably should keep a little extra flour to dip my cookie cutter in because I don't want the dough to stick to it. So I'm just going to kind of go through and um, make these little dumplings. And these just make the perfect little size for your mouth. <laughs> And I could cut these up in squares, but I really like the little the little circles, so this is how I do it, but you can do it any way you want. Oh, my puppies and my cat are bugging me to go outside. And it's been an in and outdoor thing all day with them. They're out there two minutes and they want to come back in because it's too cold. No, we're not going out. It's too cold. You've already been out. See, he's learned to be a treat monger. Goes out there for two minutes and comes back in, and he thinks he's going to get a reward. <laughs> he knows how to work me. I'm a sucker for my dogs. And the cat. I think the cat is worse than the dogs. <laughs> I have been joking for the last few weeks that I need a kitty a kitty door because um, it gets old trying to be a kitty door lady. He doesn't like it out in the cold very much either. So see, be good. So this takes some time to get all of these cut. But um, my cutter just to make sure it doesn't stick. And I can hear my water starting to boil too. I am going to drop those carrots into the stove because this is heating up to a boil and I want to get them cooking and tender before I really drop my dumplings in there. So we're going to get these cooking. got a whole bag of just little um, baby carrots. I'm just going to put these in here. I'm trying to burn myself. Stop. Please. Stir them around. Get this broth going. cook them carrots a little bit faster and I'm gonna bring my bowl back over and I'm going to drop my dumplings I'm gonna hold them all into this bowl so I'm just gonna kind of throw them into the bowl here so um because I'm gonna have to re-roll my scraps and I really should put a little flour in there just to keep them from sticking together this is a process and maybe you don't want to watch <laughs> I don't know sit down at the counter grab you a coffee and just relax it's dinner time and trust me I know you're gonna love this if you like good old-fashioned cooking like I do your tummy will thank you for it that one's a little sticky. Uh, let's see. Get my scraps out of the way. If I would have floured my board just a little bit more, and then this dough is a little bit soft yet, but um, most of them are coming right up. Some of them are stick sticking. Stop! All right? Now you're not going out. Sorry, I have to discipline my dog.
some of these I might have to re-roll because they're sticking a little bit and I'm getting sticky fingers. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes and I will get these rolled up and then I will take you into the next step so I don't bore you to death and you won't have to listen to my dog whine as he's <laughs> bugging me to get out the door. So um, I will have my husband put this <laughs> this video together for you because I'm like, I'm not techie. So um, I'll finish cutting these up and I will get back with you and we'll get ready to drop them into the broth. So, okay, be right back. Hey, okay, did you enjoy your coffee? Okay, I got the dumplings all all, um, all cut up. I have quite a bowl of them. I'm gonna show you, these are my little dumplings. I've got them all cut up in circles. And I actually did a couple photos just to show you. So I've got my broth here boiling and I've got my carrots in here and I'm sure that the carrots are probably cooked by now. So I'm just gonna kind of move you over here to my boiling pot. If I can get you in here to kind of let you see what I've got going on here. I don't know if I'm doing so good. All right. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, here we go. And hopefully I won't get you all steamed up. Let's see. Okay, good view. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop these dumplings right in here. And you can watch them puff up as they start to cook. This can be another process, and um, like I said, I forget how, how tedious and long it is sometimes to cut up these little dump ones, but I hope you sipped your coffee and just kind of enjoy the cooking process because it is a process a little bit for um, getting this going. But you can see as I drop these in here, they're already starting to puff up and they will make a nice thick broth with, and it'll almost be like a gravy type thing with these fluffy little guys puffing up. And I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit because the broth is gonna cool as I'm dropping these in and I want them to cook. So I'm just gonna usually my husband is over here and we put these in together because three hands are better than one, but we'll just get it done. So, but it's really cool to watch them puff up because the self rising flour makes them puff up in that nice boiling broth. And we always enjoy this meal. And like I said, it's always better the next day when you reheat it. And if your broth is a little thick when you reheat it the next day, you can always just add a little water to it just to kind of um, thin it up a little bit because it will get really thick after it sits overnight. But this meal is phenomenal. I do have my chicken. It's in the crock pot still, and I have to get that out and shred it up. But when these things all get plumped up, I'm going to um, put my shredded chicken in here couple tablespoons of butter and a nice generous sprinkle of black pepper and this will be ready to, ready to eat but it's going to be really hot so you probably want to put it in a bowl and let it cool for a few minutes before you dig in totally fabulous though I have made this many a times. I worked for a hunting camp years ago in Kansas, and I, this was one of my meals that I would make. And nobody ever left the table disappointed or hungry. This is something, like I said, everybody loves. I haven't met anybody that doesn't like this, unless you don't like chicken. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's very flavorful. And it's, and it's worth the time to um, put it together. But like I said, the crock pot does most of the work. It's just getting the dumplings made and rolled out and cut up. And I'm just dropping them into the boiling broth. Now, some of my dumplings on the bottom are real sticky, but if they're not perfect, don't worry because they're just gonna cook up 
even my little um, pieces of dough that are loose on my board, I throw them in here because they'll just make a nice gravy. I'm getting toward the bottom of the bowl. And if you're throwing your, your dumplings back into your bowl and your dough is sticky, I would layer a few dumplings and then I sprinkled a little bit of flour on them just to kind of keep them from sticking together. Because some of them, you know, when I first rolled out my dough, it was still a little sticky. And um, I didn't want them to stick together. So they're, they're puffing up really nice. My dough is a little sticky on the bottom, but it won't matter. How you put these things in here, they're all going to cook, and they are tasty little morsels. So I almost got them all. said this broth will thicken as it cooks and the chicken in there it'll just get nice and thick that in there too but um the flour also makes a really nice gravy okay so that's about the last of them and i just take the little crumbs out of the bottom of my bowl put them in there because it'll all cook up to let that cook for a little bit. Get them all in there in the juice. They'll puff up. I'm just going to kind of half tip this lid on it and um, aim you over here and maybe you can see. Okay, yeah, my crock pot is over here. I got some fish water here. I'm going to heat everything in. turn this down just a little bit because she's up to a good boil and I have the lid half cropped on so um, this is cool enough Probably could have spreaded it right into my my pot here, but I want you to see. I really don't want all these little fatty pieces in here either, so let me just get those out. They get almost like jelly, and I don't like that texture. Um, the spices were on top of my one piece of chicken, but you can see. Oops. Here how well it looks and I'm just going to uh, shred this up a little bit and um, let's see if I'm going to be over here a little bit and um, the chicken is so tender I can just take the fork and just kind of fork it into shredded little pieces. I'm sorry, I'm not going to spill you any, Millie. <laughs> I'm all looking for something. So, I cooked my chicken. I started it off on low, but um, then I put it on high. And it doesn't hurt to let this cook. 
in your crock pot because it just makes it really nice and tender and you can just shred it and cut it with a fork and it just makes it great and it disperses well into your dumplings. And like I said, this is just three big breasts that I put, cooked in the crock pot. over here in my pot and see what's going on here. The dumplings are all nice and puffy and I think they're pretty well cooked. I'm going to turn off my flame. I'm going to mix in my chicken. My carrots are in here as well. And I'm going to need to grab some butter as well to put in here. I'm just going to Try to get this in here without losing it. All right, let's see. Stick it to my plate. I know you're looking for a taste. Just a minute. Just gonna try to get this in here without losing any of the floor. in the pot. So now I'm just going to kind of mix this around and it's already thickening up. Um, I'll need to put two tablespoons of butter in here and a sprinkle of um, black pepper and maybe a little more salt. You can salt and pepper it to taste but um, that's how she looks. And if you want this a little juicier, you can always add a little more water, but this just makes a nice, thick and hearty meal for a cold winter day like today. So um, I'm going to get on and dish this up. Um, I will post up some pictures, some more pictures with it. Um, I, like I said, I did do some pictures of the dumplings and I cut them up and everything. But I'm going to do another video tonight um, of some biscuits because tomorrow I want to have some homemade biscuits with, uh, I got some little sausage patties and I want to make a sausage, egg and cheese on a homemade biscuit. I have buttermilk biscuit recipe, which is great. I love it. And I've really had a hankering for the biscuit sandwiches for breakfast. So stick around if you'd like to see that video. So, um, I'm going to get on this meal and dish it up. If you enjoyed my video, please like, please subscribe because you never know what you're going to see. And to my subscribers, I promise you I'm going to get my apron video up very soon. Um, it was supposed to be today, but um, other things kind of get in the way. So, I wanted to share my dinner with you tonight, so I hope you enjoy. Cheers. I will see you soon. Bye.